In this short presentation, we are going to talk about how to use the following items to interpret scientific literature. Numbers needed to treat, or NNT. Numbers needed to harm, or NNH. Control event rate, or CER. Experimental event rate, or EER. ARR, or Absolute Risk Reduction. These terms will help you interpret the literature to make a clinical decision that can be used anywhere, anytime. Suppose you are rounding with the medical team and the physician asks you to find a study on treating a rare clotting disease that one of your patients has. You find a new study that describes a plant-derived medication which prevents blood clot formation called clotostrapsin. However, this medication comes with a rare but life-threatening adverse event known as a hemorrhagic stroke. You decide to take a closer look and further evaluate the results of the study. After reviewing the study, you decide to recommend this treatment. Here is how you came up with your recommendation. Number needed to treat, or NNT, represents the number of patients that need to be treated in order to achieve a benefit in one person. If the NNT is low, that means that there is a greater benefit and the doctor will need to treat less patients to prevent one blood clot. If the NNT is high, that means that there is less benefit and the doctor will have to treat more patients to prevent one blood clot. Before you can determine NNT, you must first figure out the absolute risk reduction, or ARR, which is the difference between the event rate in the control group and the event rate in the experimental group. In this case, it's the incidence of blood clots in each group. You're trying to figure out how many people need to be treated to prevent one blood clot from occurring with this new medication. In order to determine ARR, you take the control event rate, or CER, and subtract the experimental event rate, or EER. The ARR will tell you the absolute difference in the event rate between the control group and the experimental group. For example, let's say this research study enrolled 1,000 patients total, and 500 patients got clotostrapsin, which will be the experimental group, and 500 patients got a placebo, which will be the control group, and the primary outcome is looking at the incidence of blood clots. Now let's say that of the 500 patients in the clotostrapsin group, 70 got a blood clot, or 14%, and of the 500 patients in the control group, 150 people got a blood clot, or 30%. In order to calculate ARR, you take 30%, or the CER, and subtract 14%, or the EER, which gives you 16%. This result means that there is a 16% lower incidence of developing a blood clot in the group taking clotostrapsin versus the group taking the placebo. You would then want to know how many people need to be treated with this new medication for one blood clot to be prevented, which is where NNT comes into play. The NNT is the reciprocal of ARR, so you would take 1, divide it by 0.16 or 16%, and get a result of 6.25 or 7. You should always round your answer to the next whole number to report your results. This result means that you would need to treat seven patients with clotostrapsin to prevent one blood clot in a one-year period. Let's say that 4% of patients taking clotostrapsin developed a hemorrhagic stroke and 3% of patients in the control group developed a hemorrhagic stroke. You can also determine the number of patients needed to harm, or the NNH, by utilizing adverse event profiles. In order to determine the NNH, you first determine the absolute risk difference, and then you take the reciprocal of the absolute risk ratio. So the ARR is 4% minus 3%, which gives you a result of 1%. 
NNH is 1 divided by 0 0.01, or the 1%, which gives you a result of 100 patients. This means that you would need to treat 100 patients with clotostrapsin in a one-year period before you see one hemorrhagic stroke event. Based on the NNT and the NNH for this particular medication, you determine that it only takes seven patients to treat in order to prevent one blood clot, and it would take treating 100 patients before you would see one hemorrhagic stroke. Therefore, the benefit outweighs the risk of using this medication.